What's up, what's up? How's everybody doing today? Mike Worth here. Really excited to be back with y'all. And uh, yeah, we want to get some uh, some tunes going here and uh, see if we could make something fun happen here while we uh, get into doing what we're doing today. What's up, what's up, everybody? Mike Worth here. Shalom, shalom. Um, we got something fun we're doing today. We are going to be making a pastrami sandwich and pickle at night. Okay. So very exciting today. <clears throat> and uh, I made a little sketch of it ahead of time for all of our, our viewers at home there. You all can see. Sorry, it's bumpy. But man, there is like a, a symphony of meat going on with that. So I'm very excited to be working on this pastrami sandwich and pickle, which will be great. So, all right, so let's get into it here. We're, uh, we're having a great day. Um, I got some happy fall y'all going on, a, on the iPad. And uh, we're going to go up to the new canvas and start to look at what we're going to get into. So we're going to be, you know, doing our thing like our uh, at night. So let's get in, and there it is. I've already got programmed in the, the Mike Worth Art blue. It's not my blue, it's just a blue that I like. And um, yeah, we're going to be sketching out what on earth a pastrami sandwich might look like. Okay, so I'm going to use my everyday round brush, and uh, we're going to try and kick this iPad up on a uh, little bit of a kickstand here. Let's see if we can do that. Just to make drawing a little bit more comfortable. So I hope everybody's doing today. Uh, doing all right today, chilling. It is Tuesday. This is our new day for streaming, by the way. Um, Wednesdays we're getting a little a little heavy to try and carry, but um, all good. So we're we're rocking now. All right, so today, pastrami sandwich. Dun dun dun. A medley of meats and pickled vegetables. Really great. So I am Mike Worth. I am your host, um, autist. And um, yeah, I'm just going to run through my whole thing here with what I'm going to be doing. So I chose my everyday round brush and I'm going to make that kind of thin so it can kind of work like a pencil and, uh, you know, just keep that going for what's going on. And if you join us, say what's up in the chat. Let us know who you are and uh, if everything's all good. But we're, let's begin this process now of beginning to make the pastrami sandwich, which, okay. So truth be told, um, I had to consult a, uh, some reference material from a good friend who is a, a Jewish chef and um, his name is Rob. And Rob makes a mean, a mean whew, pastrami sandwich. I mean, he like slow roasts the meat and it's like just amazing what he does. But uh, what he has stressed to me, or at least the images that uh, I've seen that he's made has really stressed to me is the bump on the top here, this area right here has to have the bump. It has to look like the pastrami sandwich is going to explode from the inside and the, like the, the bread is like just barely holding on like some sort of, you know, tarp of like a house. Okay. So that's the secret is that like we got to make that bump kind of feel really good. So, you know, I made this isometric cube and this is like what the pastrami sandwich essentially, you know, becomes, right? When you think about like the different pieces here, just draw it really quick to see so all the bread will bump out. Right, we're gonna do a little bump out on the bread, but as we said before, we gotta <laughs> we gotta achieve the bump, you know, where it's like ugh, just like a, a crazy stack of meat, okay. And then, like I said, like we just have this ensemble. I'm 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 so excited. This is how I drew it with the pencil. I know it looks like a dessert, but like <laughs> that is like how how roast beef or uh, pastrami gets gets done up you know and uh if you're a sandwich artist you know the deal the way you the way you lay the meats is like it's really important okay um yes and then to go along with this we're gonna add a trusty 
kosher spear, spear right? Kosher dill spear right here. And uh, yeah, there we go. So that's the one side and then the middle ridge. So this is just the idea, right? Like just a kind of a sketch, you know, the, 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 the few seeds that are inside of a pickle, you know. And we're doing this at night, right? That's the other side of, of what this is. So we need to set up now this kind of like triad of great elements in here, right? So like, you know, what? I, I was thinking the other day, I always do like these like, I want to do like a, a moon like this. That's a little, little, little deep, but there we go. Maybe that one, that one I like. So right now I'm just sketching. I just, you know, I want, I want this to kind of feel like, all right, well, what am I actually going to do with this before I commit to drawing a whole thing and coming up with a whole idea? And yeah, this is the idea. And that's what I like about digital space. Being a teacher, you know, um, paper and pencil. That is what I really push and commit to is, and I still always do a drawing first. So here's, here's the initial sketch, right, to sort of see alongside with like what's what's going on here so that kind of helps a little bit uh, to get a, an impression of what's going on right but there's a few things I want to do and modify with this this is a little contrived right now but I'm putting together a shape like a box so that way like I know like that's the volume the rough volume that I want to do with this uh, and then I, I, I want oh uh, that's erasing I want to paint uh, and then I said too I wanted to make like a like a kind of a napkin here. And uh, I thought, oh man, it would be fun to do like a, a Jewish embroidery pattern, you know, around the side. I thought that'd be like crazy fun to try and do and, you know, get some reference, see how that goes, all that stuff. Uh, and then, yeah, right, we'll have the horizon will appear and then we'll add a couple stars, right? We'll, we'll, we'll think about, hmm, hmm, what kind of stars might we put there? You know, we could, we could build uh, like a constellation, for example, and that's always fun to do. And even to this day, I'm always like, I look at constellations and I'm just like, how did you see that thing? It's like, but you know what I'm saying? Like with the pictures or like the icons that they come up with for the... the zodiac stuff like sometimes like the 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 image to the structure of the stars doesn't always make sense to me that's what i'm that's what i'm saying <laughs> it's like oh, all right um but look you know they are embedded symbols in our culture so it's it's all good okay so this is i like this and then i'll sign right there so that feels like that feels like a good one what do you think what do you think? Um, we got any folks here? Say what's up in the chat. Drop a little hello. Um, the chat should uh, should pop up, so you could say, "Hey, boom!" Here we go. Right. So this is a participatory stream that you get to say what's up on, and um, yeah. So do it. Say hello, my uh, my one solitary viewer. Always, always with me. Appreciate it. <laughs> all right um dope so we got a layout that's feeling good <clears throat> i want to now start to correct some of the things that like i did in my uh my drawing here that uh i want to repeat in my new drawing right in the, in this piece the final so what i did do that i noticed uh with the drawing is that i really did a, a good job of like kind of bowing lines uh, and not keeping things so perfect. So I like the top part of my bread. I think that's a good lump for uh, how the sandwich will go. But now let's switch it up uh, and do this, right? Like let's, I wanna, what I mean to say is here is I wanna, I wanna bend this bread to like right here. Yep, so it lines up. Yeah, cool. I might have it come down a little bit, a little bit different, but clean that up. 
okay. And, and the reason is it's, it's a strange edge, but it's like there's so much meat in the sandwich that it like makes the bread pop back. It's really a miracle of physics. So um, how all this meat like is held inside of this. Uh... Okay, and the other thing too is that like this kind of bread, I got to remember, is going to be uh, roundish because I want to do like a Jewish rye bread. And if you've ever had a Jewish rye bread, you know it's not like a machine geometric uh, shaped. It's, it's roundish um, and it's, it's beautiful. So let's do this here. All right. Here we go. All right. Let's make sure we can actually accommodate. There we go. That's a rye corner, if you ever asked me. Okay. So what we did here, just so I can repeat it, is we went up and out like that. Yeah, okay. And that gives room for that. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, this is just a little bit of a tighter sketch, if we want to call it. I'm just refining what I've done so far, just so I have it, like, worked out, you know, in rough form. And then I'll go in and work a little bit deeper, a little bit harder on what that is. Um, all right. And... Okay. And then same thing here. But I'm not going to put a corner to the bread. I'm going to let it round out but it's got to have a facet, yeah, 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 like a, uh, it's got to be thick. Yeah, what am I doing here? Yeah, okay, I got to finish it this way. Sorry, baffled, baffled by my own geometry. There's just so many lines going on here, and I'll get this cleaned up, it'll start to feel. Here we go. So, carving out these items, yeah, those are the lines I want. That's the thing is I just I keep drawing lines until I get the ones that I want that are actually like worth decent something. All right. Whoop. Okay. All right, I'm much happier with that now. Um yeah. <laughs> this is like such a such a serious sandwich. Okay, we might have to, yeah, we're gonna, sorry folks, we're gonna change up the line here. I think the, uh, you know, it's the base of the sandwich, so it should feel more substantial. Maybe I'll kick out the bread like that on an angle. There we go. Yes, now we're talking. All right, I'll have to fix all that. And, okay. Yep, kick it out. Ugh. Cool, that's a much better spot for that, okay. Okay, dope, 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 dope. So, gotta drop it and let it let it go, right? Commit to the line. All right, I'm just cleaning up here some of these gooblies. Sorry for the gooblies. All right, we're not using our our regular camera today, but that's uh, that's all right. My little my little face cam. I was doing some in real life stuff the other day, and I was yeah needed to be a little bit closer. Okay, um, and yeah, like the secret to good pastrami is like, is good Tetris, I guess. <laughs> yep, so this is the pattern that I want to play with and... It's just a mess 
but then s some moments of brilliance are in there, and that's what really makes the sandwich the sandwich. It's really, really impressive. Okay. Dope. Uh, this moon is like, oh, sorry, that's no moon. Okay, it's getting a little aggressive here, so we're going to just kind of chill it out there and just say, hey, you're, you can be there at night, but don't take over, boo-boo, like you do, do. So that ain't good. All right, let's, tr let's try a little, a little something here. Let's do this. We're going to go live on Instagram and tell everybody, hey, come live on Twitch. Hey, everybody. Uh, super good morning to you. Just wanted to let you know that uh, I am now streaming live on Twitch. So if you go to twitch.tv, I'll type it in the thing. Twitch.tv slash Mike worth art here we go i'm about to drop it here we go you guys could uh could follow me right now i am doing a live stream a la prima painting in procreate and uh yeah we're making some magic i am making this super super pastrami sandwich okay come to life i'm doing the sketching but if you jump over now you can see the the link in the spot there twitch.tv slash mike worth art you can absolutely check this out. So join me. Come on. Come on. I know it's early, but get some art. All right. Peace. All right. I did it. <laughs> Let's see if they come. Maybe folks will show up. We'll see the ticker go up a one. Okay. Anyway, but we're doing this, uh, this sandwich and we're, uh, we're having a really awesome time. All right. So now that I've like laid out the sketch, I can start to like paint on top of this, right? Like uh, if I were doing like a real life painting, you know, this would be my like under sketch on the canvas or my, my etching into uh, the, the paint layer, you know, like a grisaille, um, just to sort of lay out now, like what it is that's gonna happen. So we're gonna start to lay some uh, fills in now and like just kind of cover areas with, uh, with color. So what I'm going to try and do is really try to pick a base color <clears throat> for uh, all the shapes that are going to be in this thing, all the facets of the, the sides of the sandwich, the top of the bread, the left side, the right side with the meat. You know, all that stuff's going to get uh, some, some uh, uh, color now in its space. The pickle, the ground. You, yeah, you, you get what I'm saying. Okay, so we're going to make a, a second layer for that. And this is going to be our, our flats layer, right? Where we lay down color flats. And we are going to start with, let's start with the bread, right? And let's try and find like a nice bread color there. There we go. And let's get a little, a little darker. There we go. Good. More peachy. Cool. So goal here is to make a fill, right? Is to like put this whole space um, now like set up as uh, a, a flat area. And that's, that's really important. The reason is, is that like we want to make, let's just make sure we're in the right layer. Yep, we sure are. Hey, is what we want to make these big color areas now uh, because the miracle of digital technology allows us to make quick selection masks, which are like basically like living stencils so when when uh you know um, i have discussions with folks about like well what what does that do you know like why would you spend all that time doing that uh because of that feature because when i lay down a big field of pixels um there is a kind of what's called like a a, a similar neighbor algorithm that lets you like select all the other ones that are the same color uh, you know, that's just something that like makes logical sense in image making. So uh, in real life, if we we're sitting here cutting stencils, trying to get this, this type of fill, clean color, you know, with paint, then yeah, we'd be doing the same kind of job. But here, here's what I'm talking about. So if I take this, I was doing freehand earlier, if I got automatic, if I tap now on that space, 
right? You can see it gave me a selection. It's even revealing some of the edges from that, that quick fill that I did. Um, so you can change its sensitivity and stuff, but that now allows me to like really gain a lot of, uh, right? I can just grab that whole shape and then stencil it off and start to paint inside. That's the, the gorgeousness of this that you really wanna uh, take advantage of. So that's why I do color flats, okay? It really is easy uh, for me to paint that way. So gotta, gotta love that. All right, so some more of this uh, sandwich color which is like the top of the bread is going to go here as well. And this can all get cleaned. I might want to just for the sake of ease, lay down this color because it's like a tiny area, lay it down uh, in a way, lay it down first. So it it's, can be put down easy or I can just do all this. Cause it's going to be easier to like paint back the pastrami color once, uh, once I get there. But yeah, this bread, uh, titanium colors I need that to be like clean and crisp so that's why I've done that that way all right so that's good that's my first color and then um, what I want to do and what I always love to do um, oop, didn't mean to do that <laughs> uh, let's see um, if we go here we can make a new palette and this can be today's palette right the sandwich palette Done. Okay. And then we can drag. Oh, wait, here, we'll color match that again. We'll come on back here and then we'll tap there. And now we have that color in the sandwich palette. So we can save this palette specifically for here. A uh, long time ago, I used to like to paint a little swatch in the corner and then keep that palette there, uh, like on the side, so I could quickly eyedropper. You know, another thing is that like color matching like that. So it's like, you know, there's no, no time to waste these days. Oh, I guess I painted away my, uh, bummer. Okay, I'll fix that. I painted away my, my area down here. I think because I undoed too much. I undid it. So normally I got my, uh, my pretzel radio music on, um, but had a little little problem with that today so I'm just going going with the sound of my ASMR my voice here just so we can focus on this I didn't want to get uh, too stuck on futzing with the music um, so yeah in the future we're going to need some good music to work that isn't copyright that I'm not going to get like ding 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 for um, yeah anytime I post my streams after I record them um, I often get a notice that's like hey and I have to go through this whole sort of a uh, process of sending in a note letting them know oh i have authorization from pretzel and boom and boom okay so um anyway those are not problems um i've got these nice to taupey tan colors here that i think i might try um here i might bring this let's see tap that there and then that one there there so i can add those colors once you select them and add them to the circle at the top right you can then tap an empty space inside of the palette and that then adds it boom 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 really fast so i like that kind of interaction um, okay and then there's other stuff if you ever need to find other color palettes you know and then the cards as well it's a lot of flavors in here so really good um, in that regard okay so what i'm thinking about with these is that these are going to be the colors that i use to paint the um the side of the bread okay those are good bread side colors right so here let's get let's get some of that and, and let's test it here uh, yeah I'm gonna use the darker side right here now this bread is round so roundish now, I'm gonna clean that edge don't don't you worry this is meant to be dirty. All right, we lay it down just quick. And you can see I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm able to cut back. That's the thing with digital paint is you could cut back forever. You know, you don't want to do that in real life. It would look terrible, but uh, glob up. Okay, so I'm just kind of doing an experiment here. I want to see how this might look as a good bread side color. And then uh, we may blend that. We'll see how that, that goes. Oh, 
like a so like a two two terracotta and like kind of very fall pumpkiny spice orange. Um, those feel good. Okay, let's bring this up like there. Oh, you, come on, help me with that edge, please. I don't want to cut too heavy in. Oh, and also we can always zoom. Sometimes I work in, work in real life and I start to do digital things and then I'm like, oh, and then I realize like, uh, oh, okay, I got I to gotta slow down here and just kind of do some chill things um, or some analog things, right, where you, gotta, you can't paint on things forever because it, you know, gets goopy and globby. That's not what you want to do. All right, these feel like good bread colors. And again, we're just laying down these flats here to just make it happen. And I was saying earlier that, you know, I can cut back. So if I get this tighter brush here, what I can do is start to make that a, uh, here we go. All right. So it now has that feeling as though the, that's the top of the bread. That's what we really want to establish. It's always these like simple things that you got to work out that like make a cartoon look uh, believable or not, right? And a lot of it is stacking. It's the way you stack the, the image, uh, like the, the, the uh, parts of the image. Okay, cool. And this helps me also like slouch the bread somewhat. I was, yeah, I want that, that slouchy bread. That's important because it's like the sandwich is like, it's like a grenade, <laughs> you know, the way it's formed up. Um, it's amazing. It's really amazing food. So yeah, I'm doing this uh, shouting out to my, my good friend, Rob, who is a, uh, a Jewish chef and, uh, you know, trying to make amazing things happen with Jewish food and Jewish culture. Um, and man, this sandwich he makes is killer. It is so good. Uh, the meat is smoked like barbecue style and, uh, you know, lots of peppercorns in there and just, mm, just all spice. I mean, just, uh, paprika, salt, pepper, garlic, onion. Mm. This is hard to do now keep thinking about that that food okay all right happy about that yep. okay and uh this corner i need to work out yeah kind of pushed it a little bit harder there okay so far so good and again this is the reason we do this we make these contiguous areas is that i could select that and then also that and work on just those areas or the top of the bread you know, in that area, work on just those areas. You're still seeing some of that yellow underneath, but if we take the yellow away, right, you can start to see we're getting now these uh, solid flats, right? Like that's, that's now, this is where like, uh, you know, painting becomes like paper mache. You, you want to layer it correctly and, and have it stack as it would in reality, right? Certain things are behind. It's called arranging, right, in, in graphics. So you would put things forward and backward, and that tells you information about proximity is like how far away is something from you and you don't have to even shade and light it you can just stack it and that sort of helps us understand okay um good we can start to think about now like a meat color and let's see all right so here's the dealio i'm working in a high-res document and uh, if i go up here and i go to canvas and i go to canvas information all right we'll sign this yeah boom um all good but if we go to dimensions we'll see that it is uh, 24 inches by 18 inches 300 dpi so that's like really big um in fact we could probably even print bigger than 24 by 18 go like 36 by 24 maybe um but this is the goal is that like we we work in this high res format so that way when it's time to uh finish this up, we can make this into a high resolution print. So that is the goal. Okay. And, uh, if you're curious about how that might look, this was a, a piece I did here in the last stream. This is a, 
a Jewish daily donut called a souf ganiya. And it is a fried donut, you know, regular kind of uh, plain donut, if you will, but it's filled with jelly or filled with cream or all sorts of stuff. It is so good. So um, anyway, we were uh, really excited to work on that. So you can see like this is, this is the outcome. This is what we're, we're aiming towards today. But instead of the donut, we're gonna do the sandwich. Yes. All right. So still rocking with the with the colors. Let's look now and see if we can find like a good pastrami color, right? Like, I wonder is that a good pastrami color? Let's see. Let's get on the wheel here and see. Uh, let's see the disc. Here we go. Here's something a little. There we go. Now we're getting into pastrami territory here. Okay, that's really good. I don't, I don't want it to be too bloody, you know. But there is like kind of a purplish tone to it, right? It's like the pastrami-ification. And let's go a little on the darker side here. Okay. All right. I like this. Uh, let's, let's try it. Let's go to the palettes, scroll to the uh, sandwich, and let's add that color. All right. And then let's now use a, uh, uh, this value uh, setup here. Because what this does is this lets us use HSB, right? So what we can do is we can have that same uh, hue with the same saturation, right? This is what you want to keep locked in place versus trying to mix colors to get there. You can just now use this slider. That's what I love about HSB is that you can mathematically get these colors. Okay, and then there's the, the brighter value, right, of what you're using. So drop. There it is. So there's that's now my sandwich meat sides, the left shadow side and the right lighter side hmm. yeah so that's what i'm really trying to do here is uh and um i'm also able to look at like for example uh the bread colors so i chose these just off based off eye but um you can also choose this here and if you go to harmony you can actually slide these colors around and find their counterpart like exactly and like pretty close okay uh, to what I have here, but uh, all right, let's uh, let's rock on this. So we got now the the meat shadow side, and we're gonna have to cover a lot of territory here. Okay, so here's the the shadowy side, all right? And we want that to have kind of a natural look. We're gonna get in tighter there with uh, in a second. Actually. I have a great idea, a great way to use selections. So if you go up here actually into the layer and you tap on the layer, you get some selection options in here for, for masking and things really, really handy. So if we do, um, uh, let's see, select like that. And then we say invert. Okay. What that's going to do now, and let's go paint. Ha 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 is it will take everything that is we painted so far in that layer, right? Just those pixels because there's invisible pixels that has no color value that we can see through. And then um, there are pixels. Every layer has that as a scheme, right? So um, we just took in this layer right here, everything that we painted so far and we made a, just a selection out of it by tapping that one button. It's brilliant. Then doing that and inverting the selection has now made it so it masked off all of the existing art so far. This is like an inverted mask. If I was painting something and I'm like, oh, I got to paint something wild and shaded and crazy next to this other wild and shaded area, I would have to tape off or mask off that area so I could work and not mess it up, right? Makes sense. So that's what we just did here. Just took my brain an extra 30 seconds to like recognize that. Maybe 30 minutes, but okay. <laughs> All right, so now what this allows me to do is, watch, is I can paint like this all day. As if you saw before, I was like hesitantly getting close and be like, oh, well, I'll paint it tighter. If you use selections, this is the stuff you can do, right? Is that like now I could just like, boom, come all the way here, even down here, look, nice and clean. Nice and clean on the edge. And let's make that a little bumpy, right? So it looks like pastrami. Dope. Okay. And then even now allowing me to drag, drop, and do that whole fill in on the side. Let's do the other color, shall we? So now we go back to the palette and we see in our sandwich, there is the light side of the meat. 
right? There's the dark side and the light side of the meat, just like in Star Wars. Okay, and all right, I got like a bread problem here. Let's see. Yeah, can't can't do that. It's got to be. All right. We're going to see how that works. So there's some extra lines in there that like apparently might not be relevant, but we'll see. Okay. So I got that general area in, and then, you know, we haven't masked off the, the darker side. So what we can do here is then just slow down, right? And make an edge. So I want these sides to look similar right? Like there's a similar way that they interact with one another. So that's why I'm adding the little bumpy bumps. There's a couple gaps in there I should address. Mm, I just kicked that out way too far. Okay. Yeah, I'm liking that now. It's getting character. This one looks like a, a I don't know, like a cozy something weird okay all right good I like that a lot um, and let's see uh, I just eyedroppered the other color it's another fast way to get your your colors going and then uh, yeah I want a little variance variegation in the way that that goes okay and then even I can And even kind of cut back with this side now. Cool. Yeah. So it's all about edge at that point. It's not no detail yet, no shading, no shadow. It's like that edge has to be really supporting what's happening on, on either side, you know, of the meat. And then the detail we add is actually going to be like super fun. Like I said, a symphony of meats. And it's going to involve these two colors. You'll see. It's pretty neat. Okay. So we've done a great amount of stuff so far, right? We've laid in color flats and we did the doodle and we got a bunch of things going so far. What I love here about Procreate is you can do the time lapse replay, and you can see, like, well, we started out with some sort of cube thing, and then it evolved into a real sandwich, and here we are at this moment now. Okay, good. So, fine, right? Um, really great way to kind of review your process and see, like, the decisions that you made, and it's in super fast time, so that's really handy. It's like, it's like a fight film. You know, you can see, like, why did I throw that punch? Why did I go right, right, left when I should have went left, left, right? You know, you can tell I'm quite the fighter. So um, we've got those flats going. We also want to start to build, you know, the other character that's in this is, uh, is uh, Rick over here, Pickle Rick. And we're going to, boom, add that color. And then uh, I have this uh, on the harmony section. You can come up here and you can actually set up, see where it says analogous. I just popped out that menu. Those are actually color rules. So. Um, you know, we all know complementary colors, but maybe you've never played with a split complement. I'm using analogous right here, which means colors that are next adjacent to, um, which just helps you pick good colors that are nearby. And then there's triadic and tetradic, which put shapes across the color wheel. Here, I'll show you. Triadic does that, makes a triangle. Tetradic makes the, the four. And then analogous, like we said, gives us a, a hue step to the left and a hue step to the right. Um, not necessarily a value, but a hue step. And uh, yeah, I like this one that's on the on the right here. That's, a, that's pretty good. So yeah, uh, I hope there's enough. Maybe we'll get that in there as a third pickle color. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that all goes. Um, word. Okay. So same same deal on this is uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's get crazy. I might go for this here. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I might try this funky color. This, like, weird pickle. Yeah, this is just globby. Um, all 
There we go for that. And then let's try the light color. And then we're, we're going to clean this up. You'll see how this goes. So um, what we're looking to do here is to use the eraser now to like cut these back, right? If I were, if I were spray painting here, um, we would be using the, the blue background to like cut back on top and then make those sharp edges. That's how you get sharp edges with a big old spray cap. So it looks like the lighter green is the part I want to cut mostly on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it's got to take the shape of its what it's going to take. So there we go. That's more like it where the two colors meet, and that's why I really need that. Forget the background drawing. It's sometimes that hurts more than it helps, but at least it's a guide for layout and knowing where we're going to be and then going, you know, I don't want to do that. So cool. All right. Uh, looking good, looking good. And, um, yes, I did say we would do some kind of napkin thing here. So let's, uh, let's find like a, that was my bread color, but let's find something that's, there we go. Light blue, like powder blue light. Okay. Um, Actually, we're going to wait on the napkin, okay, because we got to do a couple things first uh, so we can proceed on creating, um, like, the background and whatnot. I'm just thinking through the process in my head, and I'm going, wait a minute, that might be, might get into something there. So we're just going to, we're going to see how this goes here right quick. All right, so I'm waiting for the time when we can really get rid of this, right, and... Uh, Hmm. <laughs> okay, here's what I am gonna I am gonna do is I'm gonna turn that off and I know now that I do not need oh cancel. Let's see. I do not need any of these lines anymore for the sandwich. or the pickle because I've now flatted them. So because I've created the color flat, I'm going to always be able to make that selection using the, the selection tool, right? That little ribbon that's at the top. Okay. So reason is, is I don't want these lines to show up anymore and I don't need them. So I'm just going to erase them because my goal here is once I here, and I can even turn this back on. Let's see now. Actually, not yet. We're going to do that. Just give it a little space. Okay. Turn that on. Okay. The reason we're going to do this is we're going to actually take these two layers and we're going to merge them together down into one layer now because we only get two when we use the high-res 300 DPI document. That's kind of the little bit, little bit of the bummer, but not, not terrible. Just a, a workaround because we can always erase, right? Like I still have access to these... Uh, flats and I can always erase the outside parts so okay the reason I'm doing this is that now I can start to think about the background right my flow field not the background color but the the very active flow field that I'm gonna put in that space so if I go over to my brush and you'll see I have a flow field outline and then a flow field shader so we're gonna turn on the shader and I need it at full color strength and then I'm gonna take a I'm going to grab a little bit of that background color and I'm going to slide up the slider here some. Okay, open this and go to my palettes, back to sandwich. Boom. Okay, so there is the lighter value that's going to go on top and help us create a, an active sky. Okay, so what I want to think about here is the fact that let me make sure I have the right brush on. Yeah. 
Okay, it's just way too small. Okay, all right, that feels good. Okay, so I'm actually now drawing on like the layer behind. So if you're following along, you might be going, how are you doing that, Mike? It's because I'm on layer two and you can see layer one is there. So before I worked on top of my sketch, which would make sense in real life, but in digital space, you can work behind your sketch, which is like, oh, just keeps it locked up if you're doing like fills and stuff like that versus like drawing the item again. Okay, so doing that to help establish the shape, right? And then putting circles around these stars helps um, reinforce that they're glowing, right? And, and emitting light. Um, okay, and then, uh, yep, let's do, a, uh, let's do a big old thing like this here. Good, okay. So now what I'm gonna start doing here is start to fill in this, this space with uh, all of these little kind of tentacle-like things that are the energy, right? The, the invisible energy of all of these stars, right? If we, uh, if we think that gravity is a real force, that's an invisible energy. So I like to imagine worlds where they turn on the slow shutter photography for all the invisible particles, and uh, all of a sudden, you can see the trails, the motions of like everything, you know, uh, like severe dehydration <laughs> or some sort of a, a vision uh, might be able to help you see something like this. Uh, I've done a lot of work with uh, real time uh, motion capture and computer vision and video effects. And one of the, the fun effects that anybody can do is, um, you can create what's called a frame buffer, where you can basically create real-time slow shutter photography. So um, I've done this a ton, and it, it's what I have like these little, little fun things that help me uh, generate these kinds of flow fields. And just by doing them so many times, I now kind of understand how they're how they're constructed in their matrix, if you will. Um, and uh, yeah, anybody can can learn it. Um, kind of just need to think like like water you know like a, we've all witnessed uh, the flow of even steam uh, ink into water um, when we disturb the surface of a river with stones I mean just there's so much amazing physics and dynamics so you can really have fun with, uh, with these types of things. Um, and there's math behind them. Math I probably will never understand, but I appreciate because it, it has allowed tools and engineers to create objects and software that uh, let you experience these things, right? Without wondering like, hey, I wonder why, and trying to guess, you know, uh, why these things exist, what's the phenomena of thermodynamics, right? That kind of stuff. So yeah, as an artist, it's like, it's pretty cool to be able to wield, it's like having the color red um, in, your, in your palette, right? Um, and like understanding, oh, red does these things. So for me, this pattern, this flow field does things. It has effect that I go, to, I go to, and I like to incorporate into my work. So while I'm thinking about just all this rip-roaring kind of motion and energy here, um, I'm working behind the sketch. Right. Again, remember, that's the goal is that like that's this is the space we're in now. I'm just using it to map. But this material, this uh, visual uh, material needs to go behind. 
the sandwich, right? Because it's, we're stacking, right? Remember we were talking about how to establish a scene that stacking is like the first way that you can describe perspective is that something is behind something else, right? We know that because of how things get obscured. One little piece is covering the full view of another item. So that makes us go, oh, it is stacked. Therefore, something is behind it. So that's like lesson one in perspective. I, I keep it simple. I, I, I don't get fancy with perspective. Um, I, I don't need to. I, I'm kind of saying what I need to say without uh, having to describe images that way or scenes. Um, doesn't mean that I'm not conscious of it. It just, I just don't rely on those uh, frameworks and tools to make what I'm doing happen. This I love very much now. Um, I'll show you here in a second. Speaking of uh, perspective and uh, playing, learning with geometry, that kind of stuff. Um, let's just finish this up here. Okay, so this is done. I stopped at the, uh, at the edge there because now what I wanna try and do, I'm actually gonna find a color that goes a little bit darker. Okay, so that's the background color. Here, let's go back to the wheel. Uh, value okay, and then we're going to lower the brightness again on this and make it a little bit darker. It's almost black. All right, <clears throat> and what we want to do with this now is oh, that's way too dark. Here, sorry. Okay, so there's that color, that's the background, and okay, let's try that. Um, this isn't what I normally do. All right, let's do what I normally do. So what I want to make happen here, let's make sure we're still on that background, is instead of painting the way I've been painting, which has been very kind of 2D and flat, it's like there's a circle and then rays coming off the circle, just flat things, nothing's really in perspective. And that's fine because it's a distant uh, space. But here, this space, we actually want to kind of... Um, try and create, and I'll start to do this here, uh, oval-shaped things. Because then that helps reinforce that there's a floor. Because the, the, uh, the simplest thing is taking a circle and laying it down on the floor and seeing that it becomes a squashed oval, like an oblate spheroid. So, um, yeah, in, uh, in my uh, exploration of this, I've... I've realize like well I should do that because I'm using this pattern if it, if it were to scoop and come into the floor and I'm really trying to talk about some perspective and shadow here that that should be present in the work so so that's now I use these to kind of dot the the landscape so to speak um, and uh, the further they go back the uh, the flatter they get, right? So I don't know if you can see now the difference is that like these circles were uh, equilateral, right? Uh, and then these became uh, oblate, squished in the space. And that's what I'm trying to do is to just kind of reinforce. The uh, the space there. Yeah, so I'm uh, originally was going to use a darker color, but I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to then uh, use a big soft brush and spray on top. Yeah, I love these little interconnected things that like uh, normally would, would just radiant out, but like in the 2D. But here now, they, they kind of meander on the S. Fun. Yeah, really, really enjoying this. It's, uh, it's like a new logic that uh, is making my 
work feel more like a like a space I really really love it I would love to one day create a interactive room that was just all this you know that was uh, that <laughs> you know essentially uh, but in a in a room space uh, project all those uh, interactive curly whirls and flow field bends and arms and stuff like that that's That's really what I want to do. Cool. We're getting there. It's very satisfying when like you fill a whole area and like make it now this super opulent pattern. Uh, you know, with tons of motion and force and rhythm. I mean, it's just, it's electric. There's, there's an electric, it crackles. Um, you know, there's a sense of, whoa, let's be careful here, right? A lot of energy, uh, gravity pulls. Uh, you know, it's like you, what you'd see on the surface of a river, a really calm way. Yeah, it's like, what if you saw the way rivers flowed, but always in the sky, you know, the atmosphere was thick enough that like you could see, wouldn't be clear all the time, you'd see flowy things, that would be actually bad, <laughs> that would mean we're the really polluted. But maybe on another planet one day, there'll be a atmosphere mixture that, uh, you know, when you uh, when you breathe hot air in the cold day, you know you see it. That's not that's not too phenomenal to us. It's just interesting. Something we get to experience a couple times a year, depending on where you live. Cool. Okay. So we've got this now set up really really like that and uh yeah we're uh we're having a nice time here just checking on that that chat always excited to answer questions if people have questions but we have yet to to get a questionnaire so if you got one holler just you know we can see the chat we'll say hello so we are coming up on the one hour mark y'all We've done uh, quite a bit of stuff here, just putting all these elements together. We're working in a high-res document. And uh, yeah, you can see we've got certain elements that come forward. We still have some sketched elements we haven't yet uh, finished or refined. But we're going to. We're going to make that happen. It's all good. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we've done the background, uh, the, the foundational layers for the background. We have a little bit more to do here. Um, so that's fine. We're going to go now and we're going to try and find on the wheel, let's go to the wheel here, like this, uh, this color, like kind of like a cocoa-ish. There we go. There. All right. So I'm going to take this color. I'm actually going to lower the opacity of my brush a little bit and I'm going to use this to paint around these stars and reason is is that I want to lay down like a foundation for then what will be like bright yellow um, and when you put bright yellow amongst colors that are related to it you can allow it to like really shine and pop so that's the goal um, you can already see like by me adding that in between step it's a little less stark Right, because uh, blue and yellow are, are split complement, and um, yeah, they are. Um, when you put that neutral, so that's what happens is when colors uh, can neutralize or come close to neutralizing when you mix them together, they turn gray or brownish or earth tony. Right, um, that uh, the uh, putting that color kind of in between them 
because then I'm going to use a little bit, and in this case to make a star and a blue sky. Uh, by putting that in between, you actually like, uh, you create a natural progression between them, you know, like a, a gradient kind of thing. Um, and it just allows like colors that would normally uh, clash to kind of stand together in a decent way, which is neat. So just, we're going to make sure we have some of that stuff around areas that we want to make really shine. And I got those five stars. I'm not sure what I'm doing with those five stars. <laughs> we'll see what the story is with that. All right. Also, what I'm interested in is um, I'm going to go back now to the to the dark side of the blue. And then I'm looking for, where is it? I got this big soft brush. Okay. And then what I want to do is now start to paint in a little shadow around and because I'm painting on the background layer behind right it's like I'll just see the result of it here which is great all right but uh, yeah I want to I want to just establish the the intensity of the shadows right being on the more on the left side here than on the the other oh little back crack so uh, that now you can see instantly I'm like tinting and toning the um, all the flow field stuff that's going on around. All right, now let's try this other trick here. We're going to get this Melaleuca brush, which has a lot of great texture on it. We're going to make that kind of pretty big. All right, and then if we use, oh, let's make it bigger. There we go. If we use Melaleuca, we can kind of create a little bit of a, a patchy feel. Went a little too heavy on that. Let's back it up. Okay. Um, this just helps kind of create a little bit of a texture um, in the ground, a little bit of variance. Uh, kind of looks like, you know, dappling a little bit. You know, we don't have any trees here, but we'll, we'll make it up. <laughs> so it just helps to kind of define the space a little bit. Um, and also while we have this horizon, we're just going to do one, one kind of thing here. Um, it's going to actually spray it's a little bit towards the edge there. Okay. Um, is we're going to get a selection. Now we're going to use the free hand. Okay. And we're going to make sure that we are in layer two, right? Like right there. And what we're going to do is, oh, nope. We're going to turn the selection uh, thing on and we're going to trace this horizon line some. Okay, and then we're going to kind of loop it around the bottom all the way here so that essentially we're saying everything below that line is going to be editable. Okay, and I'm focusing on that background essentially. Okay, so you can see the, the dash line stuff is uh, muted out. And then here now we'll go and we'll slide. Let's go back to the, the value set. Bring that brightness up a little bit just to get close to almost like the sky a little bit, a little bit. Okay. And then uh, Melaleuca. Okay. And now what this does, a little bit smaller, is this lets us paint a little bit of highlight on the horizon. We got to go a little brighter. Nice. So what we've done here is we did one more kind of trick of perspective and that is to, you know, create the background so that like it has that feel right through edge, not through line, but through edge. So here, let's get the eraser, go up to the sandwiched area now and we don't need this line anymore, right? By line. And we can see that, oh, it still feels like there's a horizon, right? still feels like that stuff's going on. We can actually get rid of all this stuff if we wanted to. So see how now I, I took advantage of the fact that like I could combine the sketch layer and the fill layer because I only get two to make that occur. 
and I was able to do all my layout now in that space, okay? What this allows me to do is even spend a little bit of time thinking about uh, the napkin, right? How I wanna kind of play with the napkin space. Uh, Cause I thought before, oh, I could make that happen, but yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll do it this way. It's, it's, it's quite all right, quite all right. Uh, and then I know I'm gonna sign on the bottom right. It's usually where I do, so I can get rid of that as well. Okay, and I just wanna look again and make sure I didn't leave any like rogue yellow because sometimes I've done that and then like I get a print and I see a little, little tiny piece of it and I'm just like, damn you. And uh, it's my own fault. I left it. So just where, you know, thinking back where I had lines, just careful I don't, you know, do that and erase the whole thing there. Uh, okay, cool. And then, uh, you know, the napkin is the last part. I don't think I'm going to do the napkin this way, actually. Uh, while I was doing this, I was like, you know, I might do it a little bit differently. I have a different vision for the napkin. Uh, but because we still have the, the layers, I can really think about how that might go. So, um, yeah, I was saying earlier I wanted like a, a, a color like this that matched kind of that. That was more like light blue. Yep, there it is. Okay. So what I want to try and do is think about, um, nope, I don't want that. Let's see. Let's get uh, everyday round brush. Yeah. Snap that, like snap and hold that like that. And then boom. Okay, and uh, I don't know about y'all, but I thought this might be enough to, that's gonna be behind it so we won't even ever see it. So here, if I bring this in, fill it. Ah, oh, right, that actually looks dope. <laughs> There's like so much pre-built texture into there. Uh, yep, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna use that, 100%. Oh, it looks great, that really looks great. Um, and this allows me to kind of come in and even use like a little bit of uh, f like hot white. Make that round brush a little smaller. A little uh, Megiddo. Or let's just do a Sweet. I'm just kind of going for it with this funky noodle pattern that I do. I've seen it on like napkins and things like that before at, at Bubby's house. Sweet. Yeah, I like that. It's just like a hint, you know what I mean? It's like just a hint. I think that's a fun little thing. Cool. Yeah, I thought, you know, it'd be interesting to start bringing in fabrics, more fabrics and napkins, tableware, you know, like that kind of stuff that's like customary to go along with things. Cool. Okay, let's switch over now 
Let's get like a nice golden yellow and get the the flow field. I got a little smaller. Okay, and here come the stars. Now I'm doing them light, you know, so that they start to stack up. That's the, the point of making that part. I always have fun doing this. It's like trying to capture the imagine this magic. You know what what would these things really really look like, you know? Yeah, we get this neon brush. Let's just see what we got. <laughs> fun. Nice little neon, neon moon there. Cool. Okay. So I've got the, you know, the background stuff doing, you know, what I'm excited about. We're, we're going to experiment now and see uh, how it goes with some of these areas. Okay. So first and foremost, what we want to do is add a lot of texture to this now. So in that area, um, I'm going to be looking at, you know, these sandwich colors. So here, first I'll do a little bit of darkness. And let's uh, let's get uh, the Melaleuca. Okay, you'll see here. Start coming in and adding some texture, right, to where our areas might be. All right, clearly where the bread sits on the meat you know that that's got some some areas and then i'm sure there's going to be some areas we'll uh so this is just kind of underlying texture there uh, we can even go a lot bigger and then kind of help create like an overall shadow feel right reinforcing the uh yeah some of that stuff there okay um all right, and then what we'll do is we'll, uh, let's try this Victor here. And then we're going to go for the lighter color of the sandwich. And start to think about, let's do Dan here, let's get this a little thicker. Oh. Just experimenting. I just thought, like, man, what would the design of a pastrami sandwich be, you know, um, if it were, uh, I wonder if I go a little lighter.
Hmm. It sounded better in my head. <laughs> Let's try it with a with a flow field. Let's see if uh Let's try it like a hmm. I mean, this is much more true to what I do. I like it as opposed to trying to seems to always work out when you just do your thing doesn't it bet we'll be able to spray yeah that's exactly what we're gonna do cool all right good yeah I want that you know that curvy whirly s looks like Jupiter <laughs> okay so now if we take the a little bit of that darker color Melaleuca, yeah. Yeah, can we, yeah, now nah, we're talking. Right, yeah. Uh, let's get all that, some of that. Yeah, let's just bring it, bring some of it back. There's the brighter. Here we go. There we go. Just to help reinforce some of the Okay, so we got that side going, and now we can take that side and start to do the same thing, right? But just with like a little bit less intense colors. Okay, but first I want to do the flow field uh, setup there. Good. Won't you buy me pastrami? Yeah, we need some tunes. We need some tunes. We have been uh, just listening to me breathe here. It's just not the ASMR we hope for. Also, gonna step it up, and yeah, there we go. Marble in some lighter colors, because you know, right? Like, there's always that the different, the ground up, the fat and the meat.
all up in there. Okay, and then now we'll uh, we'll spray it with a little. Let's make that bigger. This shide, uh, this shide, this shide doesn't need a ton of shadow, just some, right, to kind of help it. Just get established. There we go. Actually, we really want, yeah, it's more like. Ooh, nice. Okay, um, now I could probably do a little freehand of uh, the flow field brush here, like highlights on this side, just to kind of help out, uh, just the get some mixture in the areas that are darker. It just reinforces that marbling, and it's it's my style. Do it here even too. Probably even think about uh, coming in and doing a little bit of darker. Let's get that a little more intense. There we go. Just cut back the other way, you know. Like under scoop some of these uh, flippy areas. Man. All right. I don't think that looks like roast beef. <laughs> <laughs> or pastrami at all. Mm. We're not done. We're not done. Okay. So now what we can uh, start to think about here is, uh, let's see. Select. Okay. And then invert. Okay. Oh, did that wrong. Select, invert, um, okay, I'm adding to the selection, so that way I can focus just on the, on the meat again, okay, and then we'll go to paint there, oh, no, I did that wrong, popped it, mm, okay, let's see, all right, so we'll go select and then remove we'll say right no let's get this right select okay um, remove Come back. Mm. All right, I think I got it this time. Select, remove. Let's go to paint. Hold this. Go to remove. We'll say goodbye. No. No. You don't like it. Hmm. All right, let's see if we can. Uh... Huh, okay, maybe if I do remove and then what? Everything else around it. And then paint. And if I do invert. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Sorry, that took a couple of 10 minutes, but <laughs> I got it. All right. I trapped out again the, the meat. So that way now I can try my, um, my idea for the. Okay. Let's see how this goes.
This might be the most Art Nouveau pastrami sandwich in the history of sandwiches. I spent a lot of time on that background and I'm kind of going over it a little, a little intensely. But I'm liking this. This feels like a, a real kind of style uh, approach on yeah heck yeah dude okay man it took me a minute to love this but uh i'm uh i'm happy with it now Mm. Cool. Okay. All right. Maybe I don't want to overdo it, you know. Uh, okay. How does this play out on this side? Let's see. Is it is it uh, same deal or is it like a different color? I wonder what the what the magic is. Let's see. Yeah, do I go darker on this side? Hmm. Might be that I do like a mixture of dark and light. Man, oh man. I didn't think pastrami could be this fun. This is cool. All right, I've totally experimenting here. I'm not sure like where this is going to go, but cool beans. Let's go for these longer striations. It seems to be that like yeah, stay consistent with the Just the marbling starts to happen. All right, here we go. Okay, what y'all think? Is that pastrami enough? <laughs> uh, 
maybe, 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 maybe. Okay. I mean, that's uh, that's what we got. So, all right. So we got a little, little pastrami action going here. I think you know. Uh, next time I'll play with the line direction better. I think uh, I like what I did better on the left than I did on the right. So, cool. All right, noted. Fine, cool. All right, we'll undo the selection you see now. All right, we have the ability to kind of fix that stuff somewhat. Um, actually, I'm going to put the selection back on, and I'm going to get the Melaleuca brush, uh, get this a little darker, and then um, just for, you know, S and Gs here, we're going to just bring back that shadow a little bit just to reinforce, you know, that there is a light scenario going on in here. Right? Hello, light scenario. Um, yeah, just helps us kind of make it so it looks like the the meat stuff is on the um, a little too much. Okay, we'll go back one and just fix that. Just so the meat looks as though it's on uh, the texture is on the the meat itself and not. You know, it's embedded. It's not slapped on top. Cool. All right. So, like in this, that uh, front little area has got some interesting aspects to it there. Actually, I'm going to bring the selection back up just slightly just to remind folks that this is a serious, serious sandwich. Yeah, I need a little, a little love here. Okay. All right, selection's off now. Good, for real. I can see it a little bit smaller, so I could just go, oh, wow, I can see if something looks decent or not. Um, all right, we're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, we can focus a little bit, I think, on maybe some bread. Uh, looking at, um, you know, th this area right here, I might want to select those at the same time and start to think, well, I want to get now some uh, texture in there, so I'll get the, the flow field brush, make this brush a little bit darker, and then now I can uh, you know, really come in and play with the bread and have some fun there. One day I'm gonna work out like one that just fills, but it's always, it's the, every flow field is different, so it's, you can't just make a one and done, that's the, Always noodle, always noodling. Okay, yeah. Cool, I, I, I'm happy with that. I don't need to shade that too much. Um, okay, and then we'll, we'll eyedropper the orange. And then we'll go up a a little brightness there. Yeah, good. Flow. Yep, good. Okay, got the yellow in there. when I went a little ham on. <laughs> no rhyme or reason on that one, but all good. Cool. That texture is looking good. We can even now focus on the, the top parts of the bread, right? Like those need a little love, so we can tap it, get a little bit of a darker uh, color. Boom. Pull open some Melaleuca, right? You can see we can get the bread doing some some great things great things friends great things really shade it up okay uh, we can get a little bit of flow field in there why don't we do flow on like the opposite side like push it push it brighter oh, I don't do white so much but there we go. Should 
Should have did the flow field first, but that's all good. Okay, uh, let's get that previous color. There it is. I like using this color history too. It's really handy to catch up on like, oh, well, what did I do again? What was the color that I used to blend that? Okay, just reinforce some of these shadows. Cool. Ooh, look at that sandwich. Unforgettable. Yeah, looking good. Looking good. All right, let's give the pickle a little bit of time. What do you say? Boop. Boop. No, let's just do one side. Boop. Paint. Let's eyedropper that green. I can always get it from my uh, my space as well, like the... All right, and then we've got... seeds Go a little darker here a little pickle style Mm-hmm. Okay, and then we'll do the opposite side. And then we'll get the, um, there we go, that color. So we'll yin-yang it. Like that. Mm, okay, and then uh, I wanted to do like a bright. Like this yellow is not observable on pickles, I know, but. I don't care. I love it. Sweet. Yeah, this is a this is a kosher dill after all. Come on, y'all. Select. Okay. Um, I didn't add any shadow to the stuff, so I'm just gonna do that real fast. Here we go. Get the Melaleuca brush. Yeah, just a little bit of shadow here on this side will help kind of reinforce its pickle pickle origins. And just bring a little highlight on this side too. Sweet, fun. Doing good here, y'all, doing good. Okay, um, all right. So the other thing now I wanna do is I've been playing with this like, uh, where is it? Let's do a little, little flare. So it will shine. Right? It's like these are the... Yummy, yummy. Um, what did I want to do here? Oh, uh, oh uh, I've got steam. So there should be elements. And yeah, flames and steam. And uh, either they look different on a, any given day. It's like that's as big as it can go, too. So here, let's see. I 
Wish it was bigger. Yeah, that's as big as the brush goes. Right? Is there any way to make it bigger? Scale. Ooh, that's looking better. Okay. Uh, low. Uh-huh. Hmm. Does not appear to be doing the jam. Okay. Well, bummer. Um, I like to do like some hot steam. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make it up. So we're going to go freehand like this. Watch. Oop. No. Freehand. Okay. And we're going to go like this. We're going to create this super long... Oh, I messed that up, didn't I? <laughs> okay, we got to go the other way. All right, here's what I'm trying to do. So, steam trail comes off of here, goes up to the sky. Okay, and then... Starts to make its way back. All right, variegating, y'all. Okay, cool. So there, you see I made my own kind of Art Nouveau big thing there. And what we're gonna do is, uh, we're actually now at a place where we're gonna combine the layers here. We're gonna merge down. So that way we can have, oh, how am I gonna get my selection back? Okay, all right. Well, we'll do it like this. It, it should be okay. Well, no, we are gonna do it right. Merge down. Okay, we got now one layer for the whole thing to rule them all, right? So we're happy with like where stuff is. <clears throat> Actually, just one thing before. Yeah. I want to... Uh, I do like a dark blue, there we go. Okay, just a little shadow behind the back there. Um, didn't do much as I expected, but it's all good. Okay, uh, sidestepping here. We want to now add this shiny thing like we were talking about before. So we're going to make a new layer. This will be our steam layer. Okay, and we'll make a freehand thing, and we'll, we'll start it, like we said, from down here. Cool. Okay. So there it is. There's my big smoky thing that now what I'll do is on my layer, um, I'm going to find some, some white here. That color's good too, the light blue. And a really soft brush, really soft. Um, yeah, and big. What we can do here is start to paint in. 
instead of using that brush that like you know kind of mimics this shape we're just going to just paint it uh, yeah back in the day um, I used to work with airbrushes and people still airbrush today but um, this is how most advertising was done uh, Photoshop combined darkroom and illustrative techniques that we used to use for um, for graphic design for paste up mechanicals back in the day and uh, ooh wait a minute you know what rather than try to go the old school technique why don't we why don't we get the um, where is it elements brush now that we have like the shape we want smoke yeah smoke looks great so let's I, there we go okay and the brushes smoke okay cool so keeping it light Not too light Yeah, so I can't control the size of this brush, so I'm going to play with its edges here. Let's see how this looks. This could be really cool. Hope this works. All right, like make your own smoke. The brush is too small, so trying to like make the it look cohesive kind of here is the point. That's, that's st I'm still having time with that. I don't know if I'm satisfied with this, but. It still looks streaky. And it's on its own layer, so I'll be able to control like the the intensity of it and stuff and uh, But the whole point is that like I got those edges now. So okay, let's see. Not bad. I freaking like that. That is a glorious thing. Okay. All right. So now watch what we can do. We can play with some of these blending modes. So like darkens terrible. Color bone, no. Linear burn, darken, no. Normal, that was like. Oh, there's lighten. Ooh, lighten looks nice and natural. Screen, which takes like the high, uh, highest parts of things. Color dodge. Add, which gives a glow. Lighter color. Overlay, which kind of burns itself. Hard light, vivid light. Ooh, vivid light's nice. Linear, pin, hard mix, difference, exclusion, subtract. Ugh, black smoke. Oh, this is great. Okay. Uh, and then the others. Yeah, no, no, no. So what do we say? We say that uh, linear, no, vivid. If it looked pretty good, and then we can lower this. Uh, we can lower that um, the blending mode onto it, right? And it also gives us the ability to play a little bit with the. Um, here, let's go freeform because it's smoke. All right, we can kind of stretch that a little bit up, and that's nice. Cool. I, I really like how it kind of trails off. What I do want to do with it, though, is uh, let's get Melaleuca, a nice big eraser. And it doesn't need to be, like, all up in the in the business here. Okay. Ooh. 
Y'all, that's a that's a fatty sandwich. Mmm. Cool. All right, y'all. Um, this was a little bit of a longer stream today, but thanks for sticking with us. We're going to go ahead now and get some pink paint marker here. Jump over to my everyday round brush and uh, really think about this here. This was a really fun, a fun piece to do, exploring uh, the amazing pastrami sandwich. And, you know, special thanks to my, my good friend and uh, fellow uh, Jewish enthusiast, cultural creator, and that is my friend Rob and uh, his Jewish cooking, right? Really love his Jewish cooking. So um, I am going to make sure that he gets something with this because this is, I'm going to get him a print, do it up. There it is, Mikey Worth. All right, friends. So here, we did it, the, the pastrami sandwich, okay? And, uh, oh, man, I'm getting the, like, feeling like I should put mustard on this somehow, somewhere. <laughs> it's just uh, that kind of thing right now. So, y'all, thank you guys so much. We're going to just run back real quick the, uh, the time-lapse replay so you can see today how from this sketch that we did, we were able to bring this pastrami sandwich based on um, references and images from my good friend Rob, the uh, pastrami Jewish pastrami chef extraordinaire. And, uh, yeah, and we put together the flats. We built this crazy world in which this stuff sits in. We started thinking about shadows and shades, so things start to pop up and have existence, right, in that indication that they are a part of the perspective uh, that we're trying to create here. Um, and then how do we stylize pastrami? I mean, it's very complicated. you got to, like, layer and fold and flip the meat. So we first started off with this big meat block thing that I made out of flow fields, but then we discovered the wonderful pastrami uh, flipperoo scenario, right? The little line, meandering line pattern. And then instead of relying on brushes, we kind of made our own today and uh, made this a hot, hot sandwich. So, y'all, this has really been a fun day. I appreciate you guys so much for coming through. Uh, we are going to get this print up onto the Mike Worth Art shop. You can see just below me there, mikeworthart.com slash shop. Um, and we're going to launch this pastrami sandwich as an NFT. So stay tuned for that. Um, lots of fun things coming. But y'all, thank you guys so, so much. Uh, today has been fun. We, uh, we got into it. And we just did this pastrami sandwich and pickle at night on our iPad. All right, y'all. Peace out. Thank you guys so much. Till next time.